she's a celebrity photographer. Like she has, um, uh, um, oh gosh, I'm thinking oh, of, um, we're at a murder on you. We're um, on, we're on, sorry. <laughs> hi, hi. Hi everybody. We're just having a conversation. <laughs> So I'm going to start my favorite song, even though I'm late, and we're going to listen to it because it's my favorite song in the world, maybe. It may not be working for us today. There we go. So I'm late, and I, as I was telling Jen, I always mess up the beginning of the show, but <laughs> it is live. And her comment was, well, at least you're consistent. So <laughs> here we are. Taste Life Nutrition Radio, thank you so much for joining us. I need to turn my speaker on, or my, and uh, what are we about? We're about truth, we're about truth in healthcare, we're about truth in uh, wellness and in life and bringing to you people who are really, really super amazing at what they do and what they bring to the world and why they're bringing it to the world. And I'm still messing up constantly. Sorry. So I've also been away for a few weeks, like probably two months almost. So that also is the reason why I feel a little out of sorts. So I apologize. But still, the goal of this show, Taste Life Nutrition Radio, is to bring truth in wellness, truth in life, truth in what's out there that can bring goodness to your health, goodness to your mind, goodness to your soul. You know, it's not all about what, you know, the, the mainstream that we hear about. We have so much out there that we have access to and so many people who have these beautiful minds and beautiful gifts who can give us so much more than, than, than what, what we know about. So that's what I try to do with the show. Even though I continually mess things up, I always bring in the most amazing people. Um, and so today we have Jen Koken, who is... A business coach I would say a life coach yes would you agree with Looking that at me? yes I am <laughs> I, I, I just say a coach you know what okay, I mean? like I, I'm an executive coach so I don't mm -hmm. when I hear business coach I feel like people are coaching people around here's your marketing strategy yeah. and here's this mm -hmm. I don't do the nuts and bolts I do mindset I right. can do some of that it's just mm -hmm. not my zone of genius it's my Perfect. zone of confidence but not what I love to do well what we what we when we had our first conversation back several months ago, um, she's talking about, you know, we talk about her life and, and where she's come from, which we'll get into because she's got such an amazing story. But um, she flips the imposter syndrome on its head, which I love, you know. So instead of, you know, when we have this imposter syndrome, you know, it's this self-sabotaging thoughts that we have and things that we do and instead of saying we have to get rid of that she says let's use it right is that a good way of, of putting it yeah yeah because cool. I think so many you know if you google how to overcome imposter syndrome and it's become a very I don't know if it's because during the pandemic people's mental health was you know like keeping an equilibrium and a and a and a positive mental state was mm -hmm. so much more difficult because we weren't around other people. We were spending a lot of time alone with our thoughts and we, or tied to our technology and we don't have a lot of practice being still, being silent, mm -hmm. taking technology Shabbats. So if you Google, how do I overcome imposter syndrome? The last week when I did that, there was 2.4 million tips and how to overcome it. <laughs> and Right? And I'm like, okay, well, if it's working, uh -huh. why the hell is there so many tips out right, there? Right, right. It's not working. And what I thought about was I love hiking. And so if I'm hiking and I'm trying to, you know, there's a boulder, I've either got to scramble over it, I've got to walk around it. I'm not going to, like, get a whatever crowbar and get it out of the way. But that thing has to stay stuck. So when you're saying overcome imposter syndrome, there's a thing that you've got to come over which causes it to stay su stuck. You're actually interacting with your ego and your subconscious instead of using creative visualization and your super conscious to envision the life that you wanna have. And so the work that I do when I'm with people is we get to the root of where that rock came from in the mm -hmm. first place. Mm -hmm. We not only dislodge it, we get rid of it. So we're identifying a neural pathway, disrupting it, and then creating a new vision, a new future, a new neural pathway. And the cool thing about the brain is it doesn't know the difference between real and fake. Right. So if you're envisioning yourself 
uh, speaking, you know, coaching people from Necker Island, which happens to be one of my dreams. I want to coach people on Necker Island. I want to coach executives with, you know, on that island. Your brain thinks you're already there. And so it's going to start solving the problem called get you to Necker Island. Mm -hmm. So most coaches, when you're trying to overcome stuff, you're interacting with the human and the brain that's designed to keep the thing it's a brain of alive and 40,000 years of evolution, you're interacting with its prediction, it's, you know, pre its prediction machine. You're not actually causing someone to get grounded in not only who they are, but the vision they have for themselves, yeah. and then providing them a roadmap to ongoingly create who they are and who they want to be, not as a future vision, but as a future vision now. Right. Very long explanation, but that's the work that I do. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. And I think it's so important. It's so important to understand that, you know, the negativity, the negative self-talk, all of these things, when you when you have goals and you and you stay stuck, it, they're they're gonna just be that much more difficult to reach. Um, and you gotta you gotta get outside of that and talk to somebody who can help you get outside of that. You know, I think it's so important to 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 find the people like you who can who can see what you don't see because so we can't see outside of ourselves so often. Mm -hmm. Um so real quick, before I get too much deeper, because I really want to jump into this, but I want to, I always start the show with gratitude, and I would love for you to tell us something that you're grateful for today. Mm, I do this every morning, actually. I have mm, a practice good. of writing five things that I am grateful for, and one thing that I'm grateful for today was the opportunity to be flexible with my morning because I woke up and I had a massive headache. I had wine last night, which oh, I don't usually drink. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I woke up with a massive headache and I was like, good thing you've got a great company with a great boss. Mm -hmm. Who's going to let <laughs> yeah. you get into your morning? Like, isn't that amazing? You know, as yes. entrepreneurs, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's, um, can be not dicey, but can be stressful. Uh -huh. when you're the one running the company. But this morning, I'm like, you know what? Thank God for that flexibility to sit and enjoy a cup of coffee and meditate and do my yes. tapping and do all the things. So really grateful for flexibility this morning. Good for you. Yeah, it's the most frustrating thing about age, I think, is how wine just is not your friend any longer. <laughs> I get the same thing. I, I love you. Like it's the most frustrating thing, not the random chin hair, not <laughs> right. it's, the, it's the, the fact that you you know can't see without readers. I mean, when uh, I turned forty, yeah. it was over. Yeah, I'm like, why overnight? And I now yes. not read my son's medication. I'm like, what mm -hmm. is that? No, it's the fact that we can't <laughs> metabolize wine. Yeah. I like wine. Yeah. <laughs> it is frustrating. I do love wine, and I still enjoy it periodically. But I certainly can not do more than a glass or two because it same thing massive headache it's just yes. frustrating so um i will what i'm grateful for and so i um if you've seen the show then you probably have a little bit of an idea about this but if you haven't then here's where i am um my mom was diagnosed with glioblastoma which is a brain cancer uh gosh it's been now must have been almost two months ago but from uh from diagnosis to passing was six weeks so um oh here we go so the things that i'm grateful for for her for the ability to be an entrepreneur where i could leave my family here in colorado go to arkansas two weeks at a time so two weeks there a week home two weeks there something like that um to spend time with her in the hospital, spend time with her at home um, as she was going through her process of transitioning and being with Christ. And the people who have come out of the woodwork to support and lift up are amazing. And I'm just really grateful for, as much as I hate it, I'm so angry that all of this has to happen. I'm also very aware and realistic that it has to happen and that it will happen. Um, but as Jen and I were talking a little while ago, and I, I've said this before for other situations, and it's always true, is these, these, the things that are the hardest are the things that help you to grow the most. 
and I'm, and, and I'm appreciative of that and I'm grateful for that and I learned a lot. I'd say one of the most frustrating things um, was the fact that I wasn't able to do anything except be there. You know, in my line of work, I'm a, I'm a helper, I'm a researcher, I'm a guide, you know, I want to find answers, even if it's not the ultimate answer, I want to find answers, and that's what I did, is I researched and I looked and I, I read and all of the things and I couldn't use any of it. <laughs> all I could do was be there and be with her, and I'm just grateful for that opportunity, although there's a lot of frustration. So, um, yeah. That's where I am today, and I'm glad to be back here. Glad, uh, you know, for you know Henry, you know, owner of amazing KUHS Denver, to just you know he's there. You know, I had to cancel a show ten minutes prior to the show back a few weeks ago, um, and everybody just took over, and it was just amazing. So I don't mean to ramble. I'm just really grateful for the place that I'm in. Um, I'm you know in this new world without my mom. And, um, and, you know, Jen and I had this conversation, and we'll get more into this because she went through a very similar situation, and I was reading her book, and I was like, holy smokes, this is me, this is me. And it was really so cool, and I think I want, I want to, let's get into that here in a little bit because I think it's such a great conversation to have, and I know it's going to resonate with a lot of people. I think it will resonate with a lot of women who have to go through the process of losing parents. Um, but I think, I think first, and you tell me, because I don't really care one way or the other, but I do want to know, I want you to tell people, you know, your story, you know, who you are, where you came from, um, what brought you to this place, and maybe that includes the book that you wrote, which is an amazing book. It was so good. Um, and maybe we just get to that a little bit. I, I, you know, I'll leave it up to you and how we want to kind of go through the conversation. But she's got some great stories. You're hilarious. And I'm just excited to jump in. Yeah, I'm excited to jump in with you too. We can follow it wherever you want to go. Yeah. I mean, um, if you, you know, the name of my book is When I Die, Take My Panties, which is amazing. <laughs> and I named it that because my mom told me to take her panties. <laughs> so, you know, originally when I, when, when I was, it was like a month before she died, and I, w I usually go to visit her for a week around my birthday and a week around her birthday is December 23rd, so always Christmas, mm -hmm. and I would be with her around Christmas and New Year's, and then, um, you know, my birthday's in August, I would also be with her at that time anyhow, so she was going through her stuff, because she knew, you know, we had tried everything, she was died of ovarian cancer, was misdiagnosed for a year. This is really important for your listeners yeah, to this is. around mm -hmm. their health. And she was misdiagnosed because there is no test for ovarian cancer. People think their pap smear is for ovarian cancer. It's not, it's for cervical cancer. Um, ovarian cancer, there's 23 types. Okay. There's babies that are born <laughs> with it. Wow. It's like this very unique type that, that babies are born with like in utero. Oh my um, mostly it's women over 60, but I know young women, 18, 19, 20 years old, that got it, um, that had debulking surgery, which means basically meant they had a full hysterectomy and then a lot of their other vital organs taken out mm -hmm. because the cancer was there. And their big thing was their dating. Like, when you tell your partner you can't have children, right, right. first date or the once you're in love and then mm -hmm. you're thinking about the future and, oh, by the way, I can't biologically have my own kids, is that. So it was just, you know, it's heartbreaking. And when my mom was going through this, so she was, we were together in August, and she's like, I want you to have this jewelry. I want you to have this. And then she opens up her drawer. I kid you not, Nikki. And there's hanky pankies. Which <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I love hanky pankies. Most comfortable thong underwear in I'd the world. I had never heard of them until your book. So. <laughs> so she opens up this drawer, and there's like 20 pairs in there. She had introduced me to them, you know, years uh -huh. ago. And she's like, look, these are pretty much brand new. I haven't really worn them. Goodwill won't take them. You shouldn't throw them away. Take my panties. <laughs> I was like, okay. And I did. I mean, I was like, do I, I'm going to humor her, and I'm uh -huh. going to take them. But yeah. do I? But, yeah, I mean, I would, pair would wear, I'd wear them. Uh -huh. You know, pair would wear out. You know, I'd replace yeah. them. And so that, and so when I was in the midst of writing my book, because my mom made such a difference. She worked for NASA. She was a scientist. She mm -hmm. helped NASA design curriculum for inner city kids using the space program as a way to engage them in uh, STEM and have more um, kids of color 
be interested in engineering and aerospace. And I said, I want your death to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so as I was writing the book, I went to a conference and met with some publishers and agents. And one woman said to me, thank God for her. She goes, Jen, nobody wants another misery memoir. Mm -hmm. And I'm a stand-up comedian. So I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, well, here we go. We're going to take a different tack to it. And that's where the... The title came in, and let me say this just to kind of round it out, which is Mm -hmm. for your listeners, for women in particular, here are the signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer so that you know, okay, and you're going to have all four of these symptoms for two weeks straight, and no change in diet or exercise makes a difference. So you're looking for the constellation of these symptoms. And remember the word beat, like you beat on a drum. B is for bloating. E is for eating, meaning you don't have an appetite or you feel really full quickly. A for abdominal pain and T for trouble urinating. Your bladder feels Mm -hmm. full all the time or you go and you don't feel like you can empty your bladder. So you're bloated, you don't have an appetite or you feel full quickly. You've got abdominal pain, sometimes lower back pain and trouble urinating. When you have, and what woman doesn't have those things every month? Right, right, yeah. You know, that's, and, and that's why it's so hard to diagnose. So if you have all four at the same time and no change in diet or exercise makes a difference, you want to go to your gynecologist, bypass your primary care physician, your gynecologist, and say, prove to me I don't have it. Mm-hmm. The only way they can prove it is if they biopsy the tissue. And I have known, now I'm going to get broken up, you know, four mm-hmm. women who were diagnosed early oh. after hearing me speak or reading my book, and each time I just kiss to God and mm-hmm. I say, Mama, we saved one. No. Okay, we got another one. Okay, we got another one. Because I just don't want a family to go through what we went mm-hmm. through. Yeah. Wow. Um, and, you know, and it, it, it is eye-opening because as I was reading, um, reading your book and the symptoms that she had early on, you know, these are things that I deal with with clients all the time. You know, I have bloating. I have gut pain. I have these symptoms. And it's eye-opening for me to really have that and be able to pay attention to that. Um, you know, do, do you have, I mean, is this something that is a handout or something, a sticker, I don't know, to beat, what beat means? Yeah, I mm-hmm. actually do. I used to keep it on, it might still be on my website. Okay. I, I'd have to go look to see if we still have, we still have the books on there. Then if you go to my website under the books, the two books that I've written, you'll see when I, I take my panties, and the card should be there, but I'd have to double check is yeah. the truth because yeah. I don't take care of my website anymore. So I know, yeah, it's, I get but it. But I can send you something. Like I could mm-hmm. send you something that you could put attached to the show so that if there's yeah. a way to do that or a link or something yes. for people to get that for yeah. sure. Yeah, let's do I'm that. Write myself a note. Great. We'll do that. Also, for those who are watching on Facebook, um, we'll, put, we'll put the link in the comments section so it's in there we'll put a number of things in there but including yeah. you know your the link to your website and that kind of thing but I think that, that it, if there, if anything comes out of this show hopefully it's that we can help people be aware of what it is they're of what they're dealing with early on and so this is early stage right in that w- these symptoms are early stage yes and so mm-hmm. and that's and my mom was um, thought they had, she had candida they thought she had IBS. You know, and she's uh-huh. a vegetarian. Yeah. She's not a person who eats sugar. Like, she has been a vegetarian for 30 years, um, you know, low on the di- – like, she does. She exercises. She taught tap class. And mm-hmm. the kicker was she got diagnosed a year after she retired. Mm-hmm. And when she was diagnosed, she had less than an 18% chance of living five years. And she lived five years, one month, and eight days because she was just determined uh-huh. that she was going to beat it. And we had some good time. We had permission. She was able to fly out for my wedding at the time mm-hmm. in Colorado. Um, and then she was there for me through my divorce, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. short wedding. <laughs> Way <laughs> goes sometimes. <laughs> One of my friends goes, I don't, I don't know, a week. That's what it seemed like. It was two years. You know, we were together <laughs> for like three years. Uh-huh. However, that and those symptoms are stage one. Okay. And, okay. and what's also key is women have to trust our intuition. Mm-hmm. We know when something's off. Right. And unfortunately, we're often told we're hypochondriacs, mm-hmm. that we're complaining too much. Yep. Um, and that's unfortunate. So mm-hmm. stick to your guns, believe in yourself, yeah. advocate for yourself. Yeah. That's one of the things that, you know, when I talk to, to clients or even potential clients or if I'm speaking or here on the show is, you know, so often, and I, I think it happens to men and women, but I think it happens a lot to women 
we're hormonal, we're emotional, we um, we need to be you know put on antidepressants. I get this from my clients constantly that they're told it's either it's in your head or we need to put you on antidepressants um, because they can't the whoever they're seeing whether it's allopathic medicine which is typically what it is and this is not a hit on allopathic medicine because it's a allopathic medicine is amazing um, especially in acute care uh, but when it comes to chronic care and people and they can't figure out what's going on and why and what these symptoms are and they blame it on oh well you just have IBS or you know these 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 just sort of umbrella I don't know what it is let's give it a a, a, a name and a drug you know these are the things that that I try to same as what you just said you have to be your own advocate get out there and, and find somebody who is going to be an advocate with you and is going to dig yeah. and that's what we do in functional medicine and functional nutrition is the goal is to dig let's keep digging yeah. until we can start to find some answer, answers and find that root cause because rarely is it truly an emotional disorder you know <laughs> but it isn't don't you find though it's usually related to gut health and so there's some because yeah. we have gray matter in our gut so yeah. whatever we're eating and mm-hmm. it's fermenting in our gut yeah as soon as you clear up and i was talking to my cousin yesterday and we have very similar allergies like mm-hmm. cashews and walnuts i have histamine intolerance and yeah. she does too but she does mm-hmm. she's now she can't eat curcumin okay. which she was taking as a supplement okay. for inflammation yeah. and chicken and eggs and there was like two other things and she eliminated them she goes mm-hmm. jen i ran up the stairs i had no pain and i said all right well do you have to eliminate those forever she's like i don't know mm-hmm. but right now i feel so good and that's how i feel why yeah. i don't eat a lot of things because i feel so much better and my brain is clear right and my emotions mm-hmm. are more stable so <laughs> Yeah, like a lot of it's gut health. Not that I'm a health coach. I just know a lot because I used to be an endurance cyclist. Oh, I don't think I knew that. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. So yeah, I mean, there's a there's a. I mean, that's why it's called in my world. It's a gut brain connection, and you know, my 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 business partner's world. It's the brain gut connection because she's a neurologically based chiropractor, but. You know, it there is that connection, and both are just as important as the other. And you have the vagus nerve that connects them both, and they speak to each other. The bugs in our gut speak to uh, our brain, and the neurotransmitters speak to the gut and to the brain. We have neurotransmitters that that are uh, that are produced in the gut. You know, um, it's so important to to have that health of the gut to have good mental, emotional health, as well as physical health, um, yeah. because it will all be affected. And if you have these allergies or sensitivities, it may, like gluten may only affect us, uh, affect brain health. You may not have gut pain if you have sensitivity to gluten. You may have brain fog, schizophrenia, you know, a number of different things that can come up with these different sensitivities that you think, well, it can't be food, it's something else, it's a neurotransmitter issue, well, it can be food that can create these mental and right. emotional issues, yeah. Yeah, when I'm when I'm coaching my clients, I mean, I never coach them on nutrition, I'd refer them to sure. you, but sure. I always work with them on emotional release techniques mm-hmm. because our cells also have memory, so there's the yep. brain gut, and then there's also the body, yep. where when you store all those emotions that you're, putting a lid on because you're not you know I was always mm-hmm. told as a kid you're too sensitive mm-hmm. harden up you're too sensitive you know and then you go the exact opposite way but if you have a lid on all those emotions they are going to come out yeah. and so whenever a client works with me the first thing I send them is something called a damn it doll do you know what this is I have heard of it I don't remember what it is but I know and maybe it was just from you when we, our Could first be. conversation yeah yeah so it was, it's like a rag doll, and one of my friends sent it to me after I was divorced, and you know, when you're mad as hell and you just want to run around and yell, take this doll and slam it and yell, damn it, damn it, damn it. Yeah. So I always send that to my clients to help work through uh-huh. all the emotions mm-hmm. that are coming up with them, coming up for them, which impact, create dis-ease in the body, yep. which then create disease. Yeah. And that's why these conversations are so important, because we, we, look, at, we look at dis-ease or disease, right, as you said as well it's a it's just a physical problem or it's age or it's genetics or it's bad luck or it's uh it's just the food i eat or it's just lack of exercise there's so many things that that can create dis-ease <coughs> and so much of it is this pent up could be anger can be stress can be trauma can be the things that we tell ourselves you know you, you take it however far you want to take it but these all of these things 
create disease, leading yep. to disease because they're inflammatory. Um, they can create leaky gut. They increase cortisol levels, which can remain chronically high, which shrink the brain. I mean, you can go on and on and on to all of these, you know, in circle after circle after circle and just downward spiral. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's interesting too because um, you know one of the things we had talked about when when we met was the fact that I was during the pandemic diagnosed with breast cancer in August of mm -hmm. 2020. Um, I'm fine now, knock wood. I plan to stay that way. Mm -hmm. But I had been uh, when the pandemic hit, I had lost like 80 percent of my business because I was no longer traveling. I had a big corporate client, and they put the kibosh on the program that I was coaching. So I really had to think about how I want to reinvent myself and. Because I work, because I, I've had the experience of feeling like an imposter and questioning and doubting myself, I had been through that process of realizing that all came from when I literally was six years old. So we were talking earlier about identifying that moment where imposter syndrome gets created. I was six, I had a crush on a boy, so did my best friend, and we decided at six we were going to kiss him and see who he liked better. And he kissed her and he looked at me and went, ew. <laughs> and like, That's I don't know. So, so hard. Sad. So hard my for a six year old. My whole life in front of me, just like that. So, oh. I know. And in that moment, and all my, all the classmates, we were on the playground, we're watching and laughed. Oh, you know, no. and I was like, don't ever put yourself out there yeah. again. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna be the funny sidekick. So what did mm -hmm. I do for a career? I was in politics for 30 years, pushing everyone else to the front, getting other people elected. Mm -hmm. When my book came out uh, in 2016, I was laid off from my fourth job that I had had during the time I was writing it. Oh. And I had like a, a long conversation with God. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, clearly there's something here. There's something you want from me. And I'm gonna take the case. It's not continuing to work in politics because you keep pulling that rug. So mm -hmm. let's have a chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought the purpose was to educate women about ovarian cancer and be out speaking about it, which I did. The book became an Amazon bestseller. I was on the radio, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot to hold mm -hmm. all that grief yeah. for me. Oh, yeah. To be in that space of grief. Mm -hmm. And because I had been a coach for so long with a big um, company, uh, I said, you know what? And I had completed with them, you know, ended my tenure with them in 2015. I was doing that while I was in politics. I'm like, that's what I love. I love empowering people. I love seeing people in their zone of genius, loving themselves and really being at home with themselves. And so I began coaching and coaching women executives and entrepreneurs in particular because we question and doubt ourselves so much more. And, I, and I, the truth is everyone has imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. but there's very few male role models at the top. And so we don't necessarily have colleagues at our level where we feel comfortable speaking. Mm -hmm. So I began to get into this whole notion of imposter syndrome and getting to that root. And I'm saying all this because when the pandemic hit, I began going live on Facebook every morning to create positive vibes for my community. I began doing webinars, free webinars on anxiety and managing that, speaking a lot in imposter syndrome. And I sat on my balcony in July of 2020, exhausted, mm -hmm. played out toasty toasted like a piece of burnt toast yeah and i said to myself i can't do this anymore i need a break mm -hmm. now i'm not one to grant myself a break and i used to say to god you just got to hit me over the head with a two by four because mm -hmm. i'm so stubborn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and literally six days later i felt a lump in my in my oh, breast i was man. reaching for something and i felt a pain and i was about to do a week staycation mm -hmm. and i moved over and it was a lump in my breast and thankfully I mean, it was, you know, two centimeters, so it was stage 2A, but they basically were able to, you know, it was attached to the nipple and areola, so they cut out that part, mm -hmm. and that was it, and I had radiation. Didn't have to have chemo, didn't know the fate of my company or myself, mm -hmm. but I will tell you, I'm like, huh, I had that thought, I need a break. Mm -hmm. Let me stop. I was like, okay, God, I got the two by four. I'm going to take that back now. Nudges are great. Yeah. Little <laughs> tiny nudges, like, come to me. Let's right. just, let's just answer. <laughs> by the wayside we don't need to do that anymore mm -hmm. but some you know our thoughts become things when we think about and that's getting back to this mm -hmm. whole idea of always envisioning who you are really you know picturing mm -hmm. who you want to be where you want to go because then the body will follow you then the way the brain chemistry works you're creating these dopamine highs where you're thinking about these positive moments and that's why I start the day with gratitude yeah yeah you know 
Because so the brain will put you in that negative mm -hmm. space automatically. It will. That's what it does. It will. Um, I need to take a quick break and give a shout out to our sponsor uh, real quick. So first off, this is KUHS Denver Streaming Live, uh, the best station in the world as far as I'm concerned. Uh, amazing at what they do, allowing us to bring really uh, cool, good content to you um, and amazing people like Jen. So grateful to KUHS. Um, then one of my newest sponsor, uh, it's been a few months now, but Cellcore Biosciences. I love innovation and I love the smart people who are so innovative. <laughs> I try to surround myself with smart, innovative people because um, you know, it just helps to lift me up a little bit. But um, this is a supplement company who I have discovered to be uh, uh, sort of ahead of their time, I believe, in the way that they work and, and the, their, the, it's mostly around their delivery system, which is unique to the company. Um, and so they are they are researched research research backed. Uh, they have the science. They've got um, they do trials. If you know anything about supplements, uh, trials are incredibly expensive. That's why only pharmaceutical companies do trials for the most part. But these guys are doing clinical trials. Um, they have lots of data, um, and the, the 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 backbone of their company is are these bioactive carbons. And the way that it works is the it's not necessary necessarily that the ingredients are unique, although some of them are a little bit unique. But it's the way the delivery system works to get those supplement the the ingredients into the cells in the way that they work. Maybe one day I'll tell you a story about my own experience. This isn't the time, but it's a little bit insane. It's actually a lot insane. I talked a little bit about it on a couple of Facebook lives, <laughs> but. Uh, it's truly amazing. Um, they're a great company. You can only get to get Cellcore products through practitioners. Uh, so of course I would be one of those. But uh, there are all, there are so many practitioners signing up with this company. They're still a pretty young company uh, because of how awesome they are. They really get down to the cellular and the mitochondrial level, which is so important because we talk about root cause. If you don't get to that root cause, which is often as deep as deep is, then you're not going to be able to really eliminate the issue. So uh, grateful to Cellcore uh, for um, all that they're doing. They're an awesome company. So um, let's talk. I wanted, I wanted to ask the question, and because I, I think we talked about this a little bit early on uh, prior to the show when we were chatting, and what you had said was you had – learned a lot from your experience with your mom uh, which helped you get through your own experience of cancer and I would love to hear a little bit more about that because we, you know w what we said was it's the hard things the hard things that, that teach us the most um, and I would love to hear what you have to say yeah there's a couple of things in the book and then just <laughs> things for myself afterwards um, I, I used to call it the caregivers blueprint so if you're caring with for somebody with any long-term illness or dementia or anything like that. And really, this blueprint should be for living. Um, mm -hmm. The number, the first thing is only deal with the facts. Because mm -hmm. everything else is conjecture. Everything else you don't know. What are the numbers on her scans? My mom scans my own. Mm -hmm. You know, anything else is worry. And get it, whether you're the patient or the caregiver, I think one of the things that happens when we're the caregiver we put ourselves aside and think we don't need to be taken care of, and that's not true. We mm -hmm. really need to take care of ourselves. So number one, only deal with the facts, because that's going to also reduce your stress level and your cortisol levels. Number two, say everything, even the hard mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when my mom was, it was the last year of her life, and she, you know, we had been through everything, and she's like, okay, she tried a trial. That didn't work. She had, you know, couple feet of her intestine taken out because mm -hmm. the cancer had spread that didn't work and she was going to go get a second opinion she said what do you think I said I don't think you should do it mm -hmm. you know it was May you know I said I don't know how many more months we have but why don't we get the kids the grandkids everybody together and let's go we'll all come to Florida where she was and let's spend time together without you going through treatment and chemo mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. I don't think you should do it mm -hmm. and there was dead silence on the other end of the phone and she just said thank you I'll let you know what I do 
-hmm. And then she came back to me. She said, we're going to do it. I said, great. And that's the Mm -hmm. third point. Empower the patient's choice about their treatment. They don't Mm -hmm. have a choice about being ill. Mm -hmm. So when I was, Mm -hmm. you know, and these are three things I told my friends. I go, look, if what I tell you is I'm going to sit on my balcony eating barbecue with a tinfoil hat on my head and one leg up in the air, you better call me and ask me if I need another slab of ribs. (laughs) I don't care how crazy I sound. Yeah. Empower me. That's what I need right now. The other piece that I really learned, because I was raised to be a people pleaser, to to be a peacemaker in my home, which there was a lot of anger, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. unintentional, unconscious, but still. And so I, I created myself five, six years old, make the bed, don't get mommy upset, put these things away, don't get daddy mm-hmm. upset, etc. Well, that was always in my life of being the people pleaser. And I learned the hard way that when you were ill, you really need to take care of yourself. So when I was first diagnosed, there was very few people that knew. Number one, I didn't want my clients to know because I was the sole, I'm the sole breadwinner. I needed to keep bringing money in the door, but more than that, I wanted to be able to have my attention on them. Because then I was, my attention wasn't on myself and how I was feeling and what was going on. And you know, I used to lead big programs for 150 people, and I could get up there and lead with 102 fever, and um, feel fine. It was the mm-hmm. moment I stepped off. Three hours later, I'm like, wow, I'm really sick. Mm-hmm. Huh? I should go take care of myself, kind of thing. Because yeah. I, w- I'm so with people, and I disappear. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want my clients to know. I also didn't want it to be public because I didn't want it to impact my business. And I was an author of my story yet. Mm-hmm. I was still greatly impacted. It came as a surprise. I'd had all the genetic testing after my mom. All of it, negative on everything. But guess what? 87% of breast cancer is not genetic. Yeah. It has nothing to do with genetics. They don't know why yeah. women get it. Mm-hmm. They just get it. And 13% of the population of women will get breast cancer mm-hmm. at some point in their lifetime, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So I told very few people. I told the people in my business I needed to. I had my core group. And then all of a sudden, I started getting Facebook messages from people saying, hey, heard what's going on. Let me know if I can help in emails. And I finally reached the source, and I said, you know, like, what's going on? And she goes, oh, you know, I just thought there are people that could help you. I said, even your Mm ex-husband? And she had kind of a pause. She goes, I guess I I should talk to my therapist. I said, yeah, please do. And then there was other people who wanted me to hold space for them because that's the role I've always been in while they process their upset. Mm-hmm. So I can't do it. You're not allowed. Rule number one, you're not allowed to be madder than I am. Right. Yeah. Or sadder than I am. Number two, you're not allowed to tell anybody it's my news. It's not yours. You're part of this inner circle. And then I had, as it wound up before I had that rule, a dear friend of mine uh, went to a friend of hers to ask how she could best support me because this other friend, her best friend died of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And so this woman, Lee, came into my life who set up a Caring Bridge site and Lee and Amy would not let me go to one appointment by myself. And I had a circle of friends, each of whom picked me up and brought me to radiation. So I never had to walk alone. I never had to feel like I wasn't surrounded by love and support. And I, you know, really what I got out of this whole journey and I hate it in the beginning when people would say you know it's going to be a beautiful time you'll learn a lot from this I'm going to throw a punch them sure like when my mom got sick yeah you know it's going to be the most beautiful time in your life you know what suck it suck an egg yeah because it doesn't feel that way I don't feel Mm -hmm. beautiful she doesn't look beautiful Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. take a hike yeah and so um I you know would say to people okay and people would say stupid things Oh my God! You're having radiation. My mother's my mother got so burned from radiation, and I would say I'm RSVP. No, thank you. Mm-hmm. They would say what? Well, I'm like, please don't say things like that. And I'm hanging up the phone now. Mm-hmm. So I learned boundaries yeah. for myself. Yeah. In through all this, and I also learned how incredibly loved I was. Yeah. And supported I was. Mm-hmm. And when I finally got to the point where I could be the author of my story, then I went public, and we did a hashtag Check Your Chest campaign, because oh, mammograms yes. were down forty percent during COVID. And I wanted to make this, I wanted to have it make a difference Mm -hmm. with others. Mm -hmm. I also shifted how I ran my company because I needed the mornings to like cry, Mm -hmm. journal, Mm -hmm. sleep in because radiation is cumulative and you get more and more tired. But I was tired within the first week, Mm -hmm. but I haven't shifted that. I still in the mornings, if I need to take the morning, I take it. If I want to work, I work. And it's caused me to stop working at five o'clock six o'clock at the latest it's caused me to take weekends off and really pay attention to self-care because I have too many women I want to make a difference with and I can't afford 
to not feel good and not fill my bucket before I fill theirs. Yeah. I love that. And and good for you. Uh, you know, like the be- it, 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 <laughs> so many things that you just said, and my mind is kind of all over the place. But, um, you know, I wasn't even in my mom's situation. I was with her through it. But it is interesting some of the things that people say. Um, I, w- I was a little bit shocked, like, okay, that's probably more than I really want to know or hear right now, you know. Um, so, you know, having, I think that would be a good lesson is, is, and I'm sure a lot of you out there can, can, can feel this, but, you know, thinking about what we're saying before we say it, you know, even if we're really close to somebody, you know, think about it before you say it and think about how it might come off because these are pretty sensitive in difficult yeah. situations. Um, yeah, and something that you said a minute ago was not allowed to be madder than you, which I found interesting because I'll tell you, I was a lot madder than my mom. And I don't know how, I don't know how not, she just wasn't, she was just, okay, well, this is what we're going to do. See you in heaven. And I was like, what? I don't even know what to do this. I don't know how to process it. I don't know how, so I was, I was really angry. I'm still angry, yeah. but she wasn't. I mean, some, yeah, but anyway, I just. And maybe she wasn't expressing it. Maybe, maybe, maybe we don't know, you know, because we tend, when there's hard situations like that, we tend not to express. But I think what I meant by that was don't be more angry than I am and express that to me. I see, you yes. Know, yeah. I don't want to hold space for you. Sure, I had yes. somebody who. One of my business partners who I told, and she's like, wait a minute, I just need time to be sad. And I was like, okay, well, hang up the phone and go freaking be sad, but don't do it. Don't give me your stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I've always been that person who coaches my friends. The other thing I'll say is when people are saying these fakakta, that's Yiddish for crazy, and a different word, but I'm not going to say it. These (laughs) fakakta things to you, they're really just trying to connect and identify, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. One in five people will be diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, We're all gonna deal with it. I'll tell you the best question to ask. You know, you could simply say, oh my God, I'm so sorry to hear that. What can I do to support you right now? Right, yeah. Because when when people hear, what can I do to support you? I don't know, I don't know what I need a moment from now. Okay, what can I do to support you right now? Could you bring me a Mm Coca-Cola? Because my tummy needs to be settled, you know? Mm -hmm. I have so many foods that I don't eat because of my autoimmune issues. Mm -hmm. And because of my choice, I know corn impacts me, I know grains impact me, et cetera. Mm -hmm. People got me Grubhub gift cards. It was phenomenal. So that that way, when I knew what I felt, there's only two restaurants I ordered from near me. One was Lamb Chops. I don't know why, but I was craving that. Mm -hmm. And one is this steamed chicken and green beans I get from a Chinese place, and that was kind of my go-to's. But people didn't have to worry about cooking something for me, mm-hmm. and then I would have all this food in the house, and it was stuff I couldn't eat. Yeah. So what can I yeah. do to help you support you mm-hmm. right now? Yeah. What do you need right now in this mm-hmm. moment? I need a shoulder to cry on. Great. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. No, I love that, and thank you. Um, I think though, I think I want to I want to talk about all of the fun things that you do. Let's bring it up a little bit because this has been a it, as much as I love this conversation and I think we've given right. a lot you know especially when it comes to to, to what to look for with both breast cancer and uh, ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, you are hilarious in what you do. Or you're hilarious anyway as a comedian. Um, but you give so much. You have multiple programs. I went through one of your little quickies and. It's funny because I kept thinking, okay, I'm gonna, I want to work with her. It was, I think it's just three sessions. It's one of your little mini sessions, right? And then, sort of, my world was a little turned upside down, and I stopped doing anything except a little bit of work. But I want to talk about, you know, these things that you do, and really dig into how you work yeah. with people in in developing their imposter syndrome superpower. And I, I just want to have some fun with this because. I just, I mean, you have so much to offer, and I want people to know all of these things about you. Okay, well, first, I'm yeah. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> so I love doing stand-up comedy. I've been mm-hmm. doing it for 16 years, and, you know, I, creating my own business, my coaching business, I kind of, and with COVID, kind of took a hiatus, 
but I just did a performance in Denver and I was just in Charleston and I love, because the thing I love to do, especially when I'm doing stand-up comedy for companies, you know, whether I'm the opener for a sales conference, et cetera, I like to get to know the industry and then roast the industry and roast the people there, which is super fun. Nice. And I always infuse comedy into whatever I'm doing. I'm very playful and irreverent because one of the things that happens when I'm coaching people, even through imposter syndrome, and first of all, there's a quiz that people can take to get mm -hmm. to understand imposter syndrome. We'll put that link on yes. Facebook. If yes. someone's listening live now, you can go to, and you're in front of your computer, mm -hmm. you can go to jencokenquiz.com to kind of get a flavor. Because mm -hmm. some, you know, when we're questioning and doubting ourselves, we're not sitting around going, wow, I just noticed I'm questioning and doubting myself. <laughs> no, what's happening is everyone sucks, you suck, I suck, yeah. everything sucks, the world mm -hmm. sucks, right? So it's whenever we, I always say, when we lose our sense of humor, we're dealing with imposter syndrome. When you're stretching yourself, and I tell my clients, if you don't have it in some form, you're not playing a big enough game. Mm -hmm. Every time we go to stretch ourselves, the brain is gonna start figuring out how big of a threat it is and figuring a way out. That's another way to talk about imposter syndrome. So you do the quiz, but then I offer only four times a year, and there's only six seats in each class, a master class. And I take you through three sessions with five other amazing women where we get to the root of your flavor of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And we look specifically, I take people through an a guided embodied meditation where are you holding that in your body? Some people will say in their throat or their jaw. Women have more TMJ. Yes. Other people will notice they're clenching their butt cheeks while oh. I'm taking their through. Yeah. Because, you know, we're like, oh, like we're, that's our root chakra. We're like close that root chakra and be safe uh -huh. kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, some people, it's lower back. A lot of women, it's in their throat, yeah. in their throat chakra or mm -hmm. their heart. And so I, I say to them, figure out where you're feeling it because then between session one and two, you're gonna start to notice the red flags and the early warning signs. And sometimes you're only gonna feel the feeling in your body and you won't know, that's your, that's your tell, like in poker. Oh, wow, I noticed I had, you know, um, my shoulders were tight. And in that moment, I realized I was trying to get it right. I had a client, I'll give you some examples of some yeah. of the, the, the um, incidents that people have identified. I had a client who at the age of nine brought home a C on her report card and her dad said, you know, hey, what's up with the C? Well, dad, it's average. Give me 1,500 words. I'm mediocre, young lady. Right then, the brain's like, oh, my gosh, just experienced embarrassment. Don't want to do it then. I got to get it right. Got to get it right. Got to get it right. Mm -hmm. So whenever she feels tension in her shoulders, she knows that's what she's falling back on so she can do some deep breathing and get curious. And that's what we create by session three. We invent a new neural pathway and a way of being, because we're human mm -hmm. beings, for how we're going to show up and own our magic and own our genius, right? Yeah. And another client at the age of 12 was walking to the store after school with girlfriends to get ice cream. Uh, two of the girls didn't have money. She offered to pay, and the other girl, the fourth uh, young girl said, uh, there she goes again trying to be helpful. Well, do you know, she, she was a terrible manager because she just wanted people to go do their work. She was gonna do her work, and she couldn't get promoted to the C-suite until I worked with her, we unlocked that. Mm -hmm. And she really began to think about empowering teams and connecting with her team. So it's amazing these little innocuous events that happen that set that tone. So when we're um, working with imposter syndrome, we do get to it in three sessions, but you know, that's the tip of the iceberg. And yeah, yeah. what part of the iceberg mm -hmm. sank the Titanic? Was it the tip? No. no. <laughs> is everything you couldn't see below the waterline, right. and that's what yeah. you want to get to. Yeah. So then I either work with people, and I have two programs. One is just one-on-one -on -one coaching, mm -hmm. and some people want to be able to open the kimono with me. They don't want anyone else to know what's going on, and they mm -hmm. feel more comfortable. Other people want community and yeah. tribe and accountability. Mm -hmm. So I have a group program as well called Unleash Your Greatness, because imposter syndrome keeps us from experiencing our greatness. Yeah. And then uh, a couple times a year, I do a 30-day challenge, which we're in the midst of right now, called nice. Awaken Your Greatness, yeah. where I gamify my coaching, and it's on your phone, and you get me in your pocket for 30 days with little videos and inspirations and a, and a greatness oath that you read every morning that's yeah. super fun. Yeah. Well, I love yeah. that. I love that. Um, if you haven't, if you, you need to go to our website, because for one, the website's just really fun. It's really fun, which is funny to say about a website. but. 
It's a great website. Um, I do want to do your workshop, um, and I, there's so many things that I want to do. But um, you also, though, work. I have two seats left in January, Nikki. Do you? Mm, Only down. two, the 17th, 24th, and 31st. All right. So. Cool. Very good. So go to our website. Um, you also work with corporations, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I, so there's a lot of personality assessments out there, you uh -huh. know, Myers-Briggs and uh, uh, Enneagram, and I'm trying to think of all of them. There's, there's the one I think lot, it's yeah. Insta yeah, like you lead with green energy and you lead with this, you're a two. Like, I don't understand any of that. Okay. And first of all, why am I going to assess someone's personality at work? Let's assess their talent. So I use Clifton Strengths, mm -hmm. which was developed by Gallup, to... Um, give people a sense of the things they're naturally talented at, and then I work with teams to transform their organizational culture based on strengths. So it makes those you know, quarterly or annual review, and you, know, you shouldn't be reviewing your people annually, it should be quarterly at least, where you can look at how are they using their talents, and how, how does that map to their job responsibilities. And it's amazing what communication breakdowns we resolve once people know the strengths of the other people on their team. I was actually doing a workshop uh, for a group of attorneys yesterday with FEMA, and one of the groups did a breakout, and they came back, they're like, wow, we realize we have so many people in harmony, and we're attorneys and litigators, like, what's up with that? And I said, well, is it more expensive to go to court? Yes. Wouldn't you rather mediate to a conclusion before going to court? Yes. So when you have harmony, you're finding common ground. Doesn't that make sense? Oh, yeah. And then one of the bosses, nobody on his team had harmony, and he was always trying to get people to find common ground, and they just wanted to argue. So it's very <laughs> funny to kind of reveal some of that. Yeah. And I love doing that work. I do it with um, government agencies, pharmaceutical okay. companies, healthcare companies, mm -hmm. and broadband companies as kind of the different verticals okay. that I'm working with right now. Okay. How fun. So tell me how you got the nickname The Velvet Sledgehammer. Because I tell the truth with a lot of love. <laughs> As they say, the Aww. truth will set you free, and I say it will piss you off first. So usually uh -huh. I say the really hard thing mm -hmm. that everyone else is thinking yeah. and nobody's saying. And I will deliver with love, and that's why I use comedy too, because when you say that hard thing, you know this, the your immediate is like to be defensive, and that energy kind of collides with one another. It's the same principle of comedy. You're kind of taking people up, and then you're letting a wind out of their sails a little bit so you can lean in just a little bit further and lean in a little further. So that's why. I love it. I love it. Cool. Um, let's see. I want to talk a little bit about, I think one of the things that stood out to me when I was looking at your website was um, it's helping people to have a plan. Um, and then having that crystal clear vision. You know, I was kind of reading through all these things. And those two things really stood out because I think that that's, those are, I, okay, maybe it's because of me, you know, it's my own thing, right, is I think I have a plan and then I'm like, what's my freaking plan um, and what's my vision and, you know, what is it that you do? I actually just realized that maybe that's why it stuck out to me because it's me, um, <laughs> but funny how that works. Um, so how is it that you help people through processes like that well it's you know what's so cool about this is it combines the coaching I've been doing mm -hmm. for 30 years with the campaign work I've been doing for 30 years the coaching is my zone of genius the campaign works my zone of competence but it's all you know what I do is I remind people they're human beings mm -hmm. not human doings because generally when we make a plan it's it's in order to Mm -hmm. in order to get better because I should because I mess this thing up or comparison and what I say is we need to take a step back. Who are you being? What's your vision for the future? Mm -hmm. And what are those, if you were to say, you know, you, you have a company, the radio station's a company, but Henry or you are also, you are your own company. You're the CEO of your mm -hmm. own company mm -hmm. called you. Mm -hmm. And what are those core values, like the future that you're creating from the present that you wanna have be present in every single interaction? So I know daily there's three core pieces for me, playful, mm -hmm. loving, and peaceful. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so when I'm with anybody, that's what I'm pulling from. It's not values, you know, a lot of coaches do values work and it's like tick off one box, the other box. 
We're creating a future from the future for you to live into. And then the plan gets connected to that. This is why people don't keep their New Year's resolutions because it's always in order to. It's not stemming from core values. Actually, on my mailing list this month, I'm giving away two free workbooks. One about how to celebrate your wins from the last year because we so focus on the negative. And when we do well, it's like, oh yeah, good. Let me go to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And then secondly mm -hmm. is how do you create resolutions that stick? Yeah. So Great, great. Yeah. Very good. Well, um, we're kind of at our point to where I would love if there's anything that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about, but I want people to know where to find you, how to find you, um, you know, and I want people to reach out to you. I think that you just do amazing work, and I think it's going to be, I think it's great. So, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, we've touched on a lot of topics, and so I don't yeah. think there's anything else, you know, other, I guess I would say, just recognize that you do, you are a magical, unique creature, each and every person listening. Mm -hmm. And the, the who that you think you are isn't the who you really are. And when I say that, it's because we think we're some kind of, I'm shy, I'm this way, I'm that way, you're not. You are not some, you know, like here's my water bottle, this is a fixed thing. You're not a fixed thing, that's why it's mm -hmm. called neuroplasticity. Right. And yeah. anybody can change their brain to change their outcome, to mm -hmm. change their future, not even change, transform, because we're talking about creating with words the future person we want to be now mm -hmm. and the future we want to live into now. So for people to get in touch with me, I made it really easy. JenKoken.com yeah. is my website, J-E-N-C-O-K-E-N.com. And they can email me too, jen at jenkoken.com. Um, you can take the quiz, jenkokenquiz.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just made it really easy. It is easy. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I took the quiz. I took your class. We'll be in touch. We'll do more stuff together. Um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for the book. Go to her website and download the book. It's a free book, right? It's a free ebook, isn't it? The, no, 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 no. no. The, for the When I Die, Take My Pain, yes. is that is on Amazon. It, it is on Amazon. Amazon. I'm sorry. Just, Okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> I might have mailed you one. I might have mailed you one. I think that's what it was. I think that's what yeah. it was. Yeah. So, don't mean to lie, but it is a great book, um, and Thank I think you. there's a lot to learn from it as well, especially those of us who are going through some, you know, traumatic situations of loss. Um, it does happen, but it's good, good to have a little bit of humor in there as well. Um, of course... You can find me, tastelifenutrition.com is the website. Go to the website and you can, uh, there's, a, there's a button that takes you to rejuvenate your life, I think is what it says. Anyway, it's a free assessment. You can do that assessment. The, the results come straight to me. I reach out directly to you myself and we talk about your results and how we might be able to modify your situation or if we need to do some talking about working together. That's what it's all about. So my goal is to be a resource in whatever way that is. So with the show, with the website, with the Facebook page, uh, and with Body Bliss, the course that uh, we have launched. It's a very slow launch, but we're launching it. <laughs> so you've been a little busy. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's been an interesting time for sure, but. Uh, Body Bliss is the course that we have created, and I say we because my business partner, Lynn Tran McDonald, Dr. Lynn Tran McDonald, who, if you watch the other shows on this station, she also has her own show tomorrow. So, uh, you know, check in for that. But um, this course is a 12 week course that we've created. It is on demand, it's self guided, but it really takes you through the process of learning your body, understanding what your body needs why your body needs certain things and doesn't need certain things when it comes to food, when it comes to, you know, it might be toxic relationships, right? Um, we talk a lot about cognitive health and the gut-brain connection and how important that is. Um, this is something that really, it really, you know, we're, we, we, we've geared it toward women, but this is for really for anybody who wants it. You know, it's not the right marketing thing to say, we're supposed to niche, but really it's something that is good for anyone. Um, you know, one of the, the groups that we really are starting to kind of to, to look deeper into that we think can be really benefit from a course like this are those who are pre-diabetic uh, or have been diagnosed with diabetes uh, because I think that it really can change, it can change a world. You know, when you start to understand your body and what it needs and then your mind-body uh, connection and you know, the, our toxic environment and so many things that affect us and, and the understanding that when, you know, we have, 
we have a lot of control over what we do, but also the, the body, when it becomes out of balance, sometimes the body just kind of takes control. That imbalance creates these chemical signals that then create cravings and thoughts and these things that we just don't really understand. And so I don't want to tell people that, well, you know, it's just not really your fault because we do have so much control. But when things get out of balance, that control sometimes can really waver. <laughs> and so that's what we want to bring back to balance is bringing the body into balance so that there is that control over who you are, over your body, over your future, over what you, it is that you can bring to this world. And this is a, uh, this is a course that's it's a 12 week course, but it's something that you can come back to. We are adding to it and just making it bigger and better. We've got cookbooks and we've got videos and planners and assessments that you take throughout. It's, it's a pretty comprehensive kind of full course and we're excited about it. So uh, we'll put that link in, uh, in the comments as well for anybody who might want to check that out. We would love for you to check it out. Um, we're giving away some freebies also with this uh, that will be in there, and extra cookbooks and time with Dr. Lynn and me um, and all kinds of fun stuff. So check it out. Thank you, Jen, for all that you're doing and for, for just being such an amazing person in this world. And um, I think that that's all we got. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. Thank you for having me. Yeah. We'll see you all later.